So today I'm going to share with you guys how I plan for a new homeschool year. This year I'm actually starting really early and our current homeschool year is not even over yet. But I thought it would be interesting to show you guys how I really break things down and plan it and know what to teach and how I'm going to pick curriculum and things like that. So the first thing I do is I start out by looking at the book that I have called Home Learning Year by Year. I've talked about this book before and I'll link it in the description box below. And basically that breaks down every grade from I think kindergarten until 12th grade, may even have some preschool, I'm not sure. But it breaks down every grade level and tells you really what your child should be learning or what skills they should have mastered in any given school year. Now obviously being a homeschooler, we don't follow that to a T. But I do like to use it pretty loosely as kind of a structure and a framework for at least kind of what other kids their ages are learning in public school. And that way I make sure I'm not getting behind and maybe some things that I hadn't thought of before that would be in that book. I can go ahead and keep those in mind for uh, picking out, you know, planning a new school year. So that's what I've done here. And this is just what I've done for my second grader. I haven't done my soon to be eighth graders yet. But this is the very early, very early stages. I break it down first by referencing that book. And you see here I have standards. And that's basically different things that that book recommends that your child be able to do. So like for language arts, they talk about um, dictionary skills. I have it in here. You know, we're, we're may, we may get to it in second grade, probably though third grade. So you see I used, you know, I used it as an idea of what we need to do, but not necessarily having to do it in second grade being able to alphabetize to the second or third letter by the end of the year. Yeah, maybe we'll start with the first letter and see how far we get. Math, I wrote down all of the standards they recommend for math. And these top three are the ones that I know she needs to know before she can go into teaching textbooks because that is the plan to get her into teaching textbooks for math so that I don't have to teach her math anymore because I'm terrible at it. Um, but I know I've checked teaching textbooks. I've checked their placement test and their math starts at grade three. And so I know um, looking at that placement test that these three things she has to be able to do before I can put her into teaching textbooks. So we'll see how it goes. If we don't get to it by grade three or about the end of grade two, it's not a huge deal. Um, it's really all up to her and the pace that we can set, but I have a feeling she'll be ready because she knows, um, a lot of this stuff and multiplication, maybe, maybe not. I'm not really sure. But anyway, that's there just as a reference and kind of a guide geography. They want to, you know, them to know the name and the location of seven continents and the four major oceans. I know that's on what we're doing for geography. So I'm not worried about that. How to use a map. Again, that's something we're going to be doing this year or in second grade and science, just some basic things that they recommend that they should be able to understand in second grade. We've done some of this already in first grade science, but we're going to be doing it a little bit more in depth in second grade. So once I've got all the standards that I, I kind of have picked out that I think is important out of the book, because there's tons more than this in the book, but I've really picked out the ones I think are the most important or that I know we're planning on getting to. So then I come down here and basically start filling in subjects. So I go, first of all, I just typed out all of our subjects, history, writing, spelling, reading, language arts, math, geography, Bible, arts and humanities, um, her calendar and daily memory work, life skills, and science. I didn't realize I had that in there twice. Um, and that's all of the things we're going to be touching on for her for school. And that's pretty much kind of what we do every year. So basically, after I have all the subjects typed out, I go back and I start filling in each subject um, either what I know we're going to use. If I didn't know what we were going to use, you know, I would put maybe some of the choices that I was thinking about using and maybe going to research some more. Um, but I just make that list of subjects and start filling in the curriculum that I know I'm going to use or continue to use that's carryover from the previous year. So like here with history, we have carryover because we already started Story of the World this year. So I don't have to do any prep work for it. It's already been prepped and everything's already done. Um, we just have to pick it up where we left off when second grade starts for history. For writing, a lot of it is new. I've got a couple new workbooks for her. The Writer Super Sentence workbook is new. Um, the Draw Then Write uh, ebook that I printed out is new. And I've got the different books and different um, kind of resources in bold here. And then if I have any notes to myself, like right here, the Moffat Girls journal, journal entry prompt, prompts, I can't talk today. I know that we want to use those, but I don't want to use those until she's gotten better at writing a complete sentence. So probably around September, October, after we've completed this write a super sentence book, um, and maybe some of these draw then write pages, she'll be ready for this and we'll start that. 
Same thing here, um, the Evan Moore Daily Writing Grade 1 and Just Write and Write About Me workbooks. We're going to start those after she's really mastered a sentence. And then public speaking, I just kind of want to loosely touch on that with her. Um, you know, maybe doing some little reports for me and my, me and my husband or my, her grandparents or something like that. So that's just something to think about. So without getting too more in depth, because I will do a full curriculum video later on in the summer, that's what I do for each subject. I go through and fill in what I know we're going to be using. I type any notes and highlight them if I need to like research a certain workbook or I need to find a certain uh, curriculum for a certain subject. That's where I'll fill that in. And pretty soon it starts fleshing itself out really nicely. Down here for reading, I even have some um, books that I've heard are really good for her reading level. I've got those written down. So I just continued doing it that way for all of the subjects and prepping as I go, lesson planning as I go, you know, gathering all the worksheets, planning all the projects and all that stuff as I go. Once all that is done, this is the list that I'm going to use to set up our daily and our weekly schedule. Now that's not something I'll probably do until later because like I said, I'm getting a really early start this year. It's March right now and we won't be starting our new school year until the middle of August. So I'll probably wait until later on in the summer to go ahead and sit down and work on a schedule. Definitely after I've figured out my soon-to-be 8th grader schedule, I will sit down and do the daily and weekly scheduling for both of them because some subjects we're going to be doing together. And so I have to take that into consideration when I'm planning out our days and our weeks. But basically, based on the importance of each subject and how many lessons there are in each workbook or each unit, that will affect how many times a day that, or how many times a week that we do any given subject. Some things we do every day, some things we do just a couple times a week. So it really all depends on the importance of the subject and how many lessons there are that need to, that we would need to do to complete it by the end of the school year. So that's basically the process that I follow for each girl. And as I said, I haven't started my oldest daughters yet. My youngest daughters takes the most time because I have so many more things that I have to have my hands on for her in this. My oldest daughter has a lot of independent work and some easier ways that I do hers. So I, it doesn't take as long. I wanted to get my youngest daughters done first so that I didn't have to spend all summer doing this. But I don't make specific lessons, lesson plans for each day. I've talked about that before on my channel and I really, I just write down how many days a week we should be doing certain subjects and then we just do whatever lesson is next. The only time I ever actually deliberately plan out a certain lesson on a certain day is if it's a specific, uh, maybe holiday themed thing that we're doing or something we're doing based on a unit study. Those type things may get scheduled in like on specific days or in specific, specific weeks. Otherwise, though, once I've done all this and I've gotten our, our daily schedule planned out, I do not make specific lesson plans. It just it was too stressful for us, and it made us feel like if we were getting behind that we were just constantly playing catch-up, and that was really stressful, so I don't do that. So I hope this video was helpful. I am really proud of myself because I figured out how to make a screenshot of a video, like me actually moving things around on the screen. I didn't know how to do that, and it's funny that YouTube has really helped me to get creative and to figure out how to do some techie stuff because I am not techie, but I've done a lot of things in my YouTube career that I never knew how to do and I figured it out. So I'm pretty proud of myself. So I thought this was a really fun way to show you kind of close up how I really plan each girl's, um, how I really plan for each new homeschool year. If you have any questions and you, if I missed something, I didn't mention something, let me know in the comments below and I will try to answer it the best that I can. But really, this has been working for us and it's the way that my brain works. I need to see everything written out. I need to see it categorized and it really helps me to stay on track and know what I'm doing. So I hope it was helpful for you guys. I will link that book below, the Home Learning Year by Year book. I'll link it so that you can check into that if you would be interested in maybe having a book like that that you can use for reference for maybe what your child should be learning at a certain age. Um, it's definitely helpful for me in making sure that I'm not missing anything in their education. So make sure if you like this video that you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. And if you are, when you subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell button so that you do not miss um, any videos. That Hitting that bell will notify you whenever I upload a new video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video. Bye.